Hey everybody, it's Frida. It is September 30th. <clears throat> I did a video about a month ago talking about some of the symptoms of Ebola. It was very short. Um, and I showed a couple of pictures. But what I want to do tonight, now that we actually have a confirmed case here in the United States, I want to go over that a little bit with you and then I want to talk to you about the symptoms and what's actually happening. We talk a lot about symptoms um, but what's causing those symptoms? This, um, this person that is, let me turn that down. This person that is, um, at the hospital in Texas who is a confirmed case. I want to go over with you a little bit about that. First of all, um, this person had been, they're from Liberia, or they're not from Texas. They had been in Liberia. I have not confirmed where they actually live, but they were in Liberia. Um, they had no symptoms when they left Liberia on September the 24th, six days ago. Um, no symptoms, no reason to think they had anything. Um, they got here, they left Liberia on the 24th and came here. They're visiting family and uh, in Dallas on the 26th they went um, they didn't feel this person I say they because I'm not sure if it's a he or she um, some of the reports refer to it as a he but really that's not confirmed so anyway this person went to the doctor on the 26th um, and they were turned away they, they were sent home you're fine, no big deal, you got a flu or something. Two days later on the 28th, which was two days ago, they went back to the hospital. And that's when they were admitted. Um, and now we know two days later that it's Ebola. Now, one of the reasons why I want to point that out to you, I've, I've been on quite a few websites here tonight, CDC, uh, WebMD, yada 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 looking up information about Ebola and apparently supposedly if you're not showing symptoms then you're not contagious but this person was showing symptoms on the 26th now and then they were sent home for two days who knows where they went um, if they were feeling sick maybe they didn't go out to dinner maybe they didn't go with their family member to a movie theater I don't know you don't know um, we won't know that for a while but for two days this person did have symptoms and was not in the hospital now I'm stressing that because I'm not so sure if I believe that you can't transmit the virus if you're not showing symptoms I'm not sure how much of this propaganda is to keep the public somewhat calm I'm also not sure how much of this is being broadcast for the opposite reason maybe it's not a shareable disease just by being in somebody's presence but they want to scare us for some reason I don't know so what I decided to do was look a little bit more into what is Ebola and knowing that even if this person while they were in the airport on the airplane landing in Texas at an airport getting in a cab or a bus or whatever you know all those steps following through their arrival maybe they didn't transmit the disease to anybody else but on the 26th they felt bad enough that while they were in a foreign country they went to a doctor and were sent home for two days now I'm sure the CDC the doctors at the hospital and everybody under the sun out there is running rampant trying to figure out where all did this person go to who all did they have contact with if this person was staying with family members and one of those family members had to go to school work the grocery store and they've been in contact had this person in their home brought them a glass of water changed a sheet um, 
and this person had symptoms, then the people that were around him, the family members he went to see, whoever they went in contact with, did they spread it? Well, according to the CDC and what they're saying, no, because these people, even if they picked up the virus, would not be showing symptoms yet, so they can't spread it. Do we believe that or not? I don't know. So, the Mayo Clinic. I looked up at the Mayo Clinic um, what some of the symptoms would be if you had Ebola. You're going to start off with a fever, a headache, muscle aches and pains, the chills, and weakness. Sounds to me like your average flu. Okay, so your initial onset of symptoms are not going to be anything any different than what we all experience every now and then during flu season. But supposedly, over the course of time, as each day goes by, your symptoms become worse and then new symptoms are added. Uh, the next set of symptoms would be nausea and vomiting. Again, you know, your flu your typical flu will include that. Your diarrhea. Now the diarrhea will start off as regular diarrhea and then as it progresses through the next day or two it can become bloody. Red eyes. Like hungover. You know, bloodshot eyes. A raised rash. Chest pain and coughing extreme weight loss and bleeding from the eyes, ears, nose, or rectum. Some of the pictures that I've seen um, that I'm going to choose not to post on this particular video. Some of the pictures that I've seen of Ebola patients are quite nauseating. And I got to questioning, you know, what is all this bloody diarrhea, bleeding of the eyes, you know, what's all that about? Because initially the onset is like, like I said, your typical flu. And it just progresses as it goes along. Each day that goes by, the symptoms progress. Um, so what is it that Ebola is actually doing to your body while it's active? First of all, it's damaging your immune system that's to be given um, but it attacks specifically the immune system and then it attacks your organs um, it causes the level of blood clotting cells to drop and that's what causes the bleeding from the eyes ears nose and eventually anus I saw some pictures there a month ago like I said, if you want to see pictures, just Google Ebola virus victims and then click on images. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting and literally bleeding every orifice you've got. Um, it's because your blood's not clotting at all. So I would think if you got Ebola and you're on a blood thinner like Kudaman, or even a daily dose of aspirin, you're going to really have serious problems if that stuff's already in your system and then you get Ebola. Um, that's telling me also that if you've got a cut or something, you know, almost like with diabetes, it's not going to heal. It's going to keep bleeding and the, your blood's just getting thinner and thinner. Um, according to, is it WebMD? It's either WebMD or the CDC. Um, it kills 90% of the people that are infected with it. Now, that statistic, I want to be clear, and I want you to understand this. This virus has been prevalent in, in Western Africa. It's not ever been here on our continent until now, till we brought it here, and then until we decided not 
to forbid people traveling from these regions to come here. So God knows who else has showed up. Because another thing all these websites are saying is it's symptoms show 2 to 21 days after you pick it up. It can take three weeks before this finishes its incubation and manifests in you. Um, it kills 90% of the people that get it. Those statistics are based off of people that's been getting it, which is in West Africa, third world country. They don't have a lot of the hygiene um, abilities that we have. Running water, um, easily accessible to rubbing alcohol, vinegar, you know, things that we have, Lysol. Simple things that we here take for granted, they don't have there easily accessible. So, and they're also getting it while they're also um, a lot of times malnutritioned, um, dehydrated. So, of course, there's, there's going to be a higher fatality rate there. If you unleash this on the United States population, you're going to have just like our regular flu. I'm sure children and elderly people are going to be more susceptible to death. Um, so, please bear that in mind when you're hearing some of these statistics. Um, everybody, WebMD, CDC, um, the Mayo Clinic, all these websites are saying that if there's no symptoms present, it doesn't spread. I'm thinking kind of like strep throat, pneumonia, um, while you have a fever, that's when it's most transmittable. Um, they also say that you have to actually... Man, that wind is knocking chestnuts off the trees onto this house. It's crazy. Um, they also say that just by being in the presence of somebody, you're not going to get it. You have to actually... Well, they're saying just touching them is not going to do it. Um, you've got to like get spit or you know some bodily fluid on you, but I don't believe that. Um, a virus... If somebody coughed in your direction, just like with the flu, this just, it's, there's so many initial onsets of this that are so similar to the flu. And I guarantee to you, this person that went, look, you know, they went to the doctor and they were sent home for two days. I guarantee to you, they were sent home saying it was the flu. Guarantee it. Because the initial symptoms fever, headache, muscle pains, chills, and weakness. Y'all. And then the nausea sets in, a little bit of diarrhea. That's the flu. It's a virus. Um, whenever you have a symptom, that symptom is typically the body, either how it is countering the virus, trying to kill it, or the virus's effect on certain organs and tissues and such. And they're all right down the line similar. So I just, I just wanted to go um, around that with you for a moment. Um, like I said, it's easy for you to find your own pictures. They're disgusting and gross. I don't want this stuff. <laughs> I don't want to see it anymore. I have nightmares as it is about the pictures. So do your own research on that. But I will put a link below the video. Um, I'll put two links below. Uh, but one is just simply from Ebola or WebMD. You can go on Mayo Clinic um, and find stuff. So, anyway, beans, band aids, bullets, guys. Just wanted to add uh, one last note. Um, just got word that the Dallas Fire and Rescue Ambulance crew who transported the infected man, the Ebola victim, to the hospital has been quarantined. So, everybody. He had symptoms. They took him by ambulance. Wow. Okay. Um, they've been quarantined. And they're being monitored. And that can take up to 21 days. Like I said, it's 2 to 21 days after you've been exposed that you could get it. Um, Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings told NBC Station Number 5... And the ambulance that was actually used to transport the man has been pulled from service. The number of people in the crew being monitored is not known. After receiving the Ebola diagnosis, the city has activated its emergency operations center 
and is on level two, high rate, high readiness. Wow. Thank you, Mindy Patriot Angel. All right, 